and uh, Ty is older, he's shorter. He does hold the advantage of an early victory in 2015 over Awimatangi. But these three round lotteries are a different story. John the Rebel Conway will be third man centre ring. The Once rules again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the finals of the rules. Force Four three Man Series. No three Super Middle knockdown Boxing. rule is not in effect. He's first fighting out of the blue corner. He now has 11 professional fights with nine wins, two losses, with eight big wins coming by way of KO. Representing TK Gym in Auckland, he's the current NZ NBF Super Middleweight Champion. This is Jordan the Terror Tom! Been watching this young man fight across all codes for 23 years. He also has 11 professional fights with eight wins, one loss, two draws, with five big wins coming by way of KO. Representing the Papatoe Boxing Club in Auckland, he's the current number one New Zealand ranked middleweight, the UBF Asia Pacific and NZPBA and NZNBF middleweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Iron Moosey! Crowd evenly divided with the cheers. All right, guys. First of all, you both must be able to protect yourselves at all times. Listen to my instruction. Obey my instructions when I call a break. Stop throwing. Step away from each other before you start. Shake them up. Best of luck. Well, this is our second of the codes tonight. The final of the middleweight boxing. The limit is 77 kilos. Masiwi Matangi. In the red shorts coming out of the red corner, Jordan Tai coming out of the blue corner. Ready, ready, and uh, pretty <laughs> evenly matched, these two fighters. Monty, early feeling out, I expect, from both these boys. That's right, you can't have too much of a feeling out process, obviously. It's not a 10 rounder. Jordan Tai doesn't normally take long, he's got a good eye. He sights his range and hits it hard. Notice the Wimitangi going for that uppercut early. He's uh, noticed Ty. And again, he goes for, the, goes for that long uppercut. He's got a few variations of it. Ty looks good when he uh, just pops out that half-beat jab. Fights on the back foot equally as well, Jordan Ty. When you think you've got him on the back foot, he comes with a nice punch to intercept that time, just missing with a left hook. He's deceptive, Jordan Ty. He punches very hard as well. And again, that, that uppercut that uh, Matangi is just trying to time as Ty jabs into the body. Overhand right, taking on the gloves. Ty very tight, high guard. Oh, Matangi digging the right hand to the body. And again, both these fighters very experienced, Monty, tying up in the clinch. Yeah, Omatangi coming from a long way up. Obviously, he's frustrated in the earlier fight. Now he gets a chance. He wants to make sure he finds a home for these early punches as he throws with plenty of heat. Ty just pulling out of that through the combinations. Notice that Matangi is dangerous on the counter shot. And once again, he's dipping with that uppercut. I uh, just wouldn't mind seeing Ty trying to draw it and then time a counter right hand. That right hand just caught Ty coming in. He needs to keep his uh, left hand up, particularly if he leads with that right hand. Also looks work. to be loading up quite a lot here, Mike. He's normally a guy that will break someone down. You obviously don't have the time. We haven't seen many body shots from him. Swinging wildly at times, but still that movement with the head. It's good to see. Yeah, I'd like to see Jordan Ty just drop the punches down to the chest. And there's one down to the body. Because uh, Wimitangi can't move his body out of the way so much. Whereas the head work he can. Missing with that overhand right. Ty chopping the two fist just volley downstairs. And fighting in the clinch. Trying to find a gap. Wimitangi's got deceptively long arms. He is vulnerable, I think, to a, a counter left hook as well, the way he drops that the bow and arrows his right hand. Yeah, if I'm on with Tangi, I think I'll be using my longer levers and being a bit more at range because Jordan's eye, obviously, with the quick trigger on 
overhand right on the counter, but also he can punch out of the break. He holds and he punches really well. Manipulates a bit of movement, creates some room, and then comes up with the punch. There was that right uppercut. Time Jordan Ty on the way in. Well, that's a pretty hard round to score. Not a lot thrown. I'm going to have to go in favour because you can't have a drawn round of the heavier shots landed by Oima Tangi. Just a couple more of those clean uppercuts. Otherwise, not a hell of a lot in it, Monty. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I think from what I'm seeing, that's pretty much the way the judges will be looking at it. We've seen in the previous fights, it was the heavier punches over the volume in terms of quantity. But I think it's going to be a lot more decisive in the next second and third round from these men, realising that it's all going to come down to these two, as that one was hard to pick. Yeah, such an even round. But uh, Uematangi just landed a couple of cleaner shots. Nice evasion by Jordan Ty. As you see on the back foot when he's returning, he still had the dangerous left hook. He catches him with the overhand right then, but not enough to affect Morsi Matangi. Once again, it's that uppercut you're talking about, the right one. He's been leading with it plenty throughout this first round. See if that changes up. And that was the uppercut to, to end the round. A little bit of uh, bright light syndrome right here at ASB Stadium. This is the final of the middleweight four-man that. Overhand right went off the shoulder. Wasn't landed on the head, but uh, indications that Oima Tangi's finding his timing. Just a reminder of the power he does possess, because I'll tell you what, even though it was caught on the back or on the shoulder roll, he did feel much weight. Oh, and there's a brutal overhand right, and a uh, clean set of whiskers by Oima Tangi. And that's the timing of Jordan Tai. And, uh, well, he's got the better of the exchanges so far. 30 seconds gone in the second. And then another overhand right from Ty. Just like to see him fake it up the next one. Neither of them are throwing a lot of fakes. We know at home, it gets a taller man. The overhand right is the punch you can't see. The looping shot gets distracted or out of your vision. So it does catch up with the taller fighter. Break. And again, good work blocking the uh, left hook with the forearm by Ty. Both boys starting to look like they're loading up. Ty warming into his work. And Mitchell Matangi is actually bridging the gap enough or coming in on, on enough change or varieties with that leading hand because he's he's struggling to find a home quite often. And Ty, he overthrew the left hook, but he recovered enough to overthrew the right hand, but he covered enough to land the left hook. Oh, Matangi just a little bit slower on that. Again, just trying to catch him coming in as he dips down. That uppercut seems to be Amatangi's Sunday punch. And we saw him missing that one that time. Both boys flailing away, hitting and holding. Rebel Conway has his work cut out to keep these two apart. A minute to go in the second round. Ty's had the better of it so far. Bit of forearm in the face. Glove, love. Yep, just in tight then when you've got the grip sign, geez, he can find a, a bit of room to move his body and come up with some dirty boxing. A tactic, not the fact that he is a dirty fighter himself, just able in those little short areas to be very effective. Well, you use it is a fight. As Tana said, it's not tiddlywinks. And you use what you can in the dark arts on the inside in particular to try and press an advantage and create a gap. Both guys missed narrowly with shots here. It's very messy at this point. Two middleweight bull elephants coming together, evenly matched, trying to find a gap, trying to find a hole to deliver that finishing shot. Very much as the two big boys on the block for the second middleweight division. Well, that's a round I would lock away for Jordan Tsai. And not for the first time tonight, Monty. We look like we're going into the third and final with everything on the line, everything evenly balanced. That's so right, and it's funny, you know, Morsi Amatanga's guys used to plenty of rounds. But let's see what Grant Uncle has to say. One round remaining. Bring the uppercut up. When you throw your when you throw Aaron, double your right hand. Right? How are you feeling? A little bit busier if you can, just keep touching and get it up. But protect yourself. Stop. Last round, here, stay smart. Stop. Yeah. Stay smart. Stop. 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 Stop.
Here you go, the overhand right, which didn't do too much in terms of rocking the young man. But geez, then a Jordan Ty came back in again. Wonderful bit of movement as Marcel McTungy comes in to try and hold up. It's all coming down to third round now, Mike. Well, third and final, I was surprised at the composure in Ty's corner. I think they uh, they really need to press it a little more. And uh, Arkel calling for the uppercut, countering with the uppercut off uh, Ty's right hand as he dips in. It's, uh, and he's also calling for a double up of the right hand. Ty's still trying to time the overhand right. But I'd like to see him use his lead hand a little bit more. He's got a good jab when he uses it. Yeah, and he came out of that corner. He was jabbing nice. Bit of variety. Single jabs, double jabs. 30 seconds already gone. This is the third and final round of this, the force four-man middleweight boxing final. We've already had the MMA final. Sugi Pesolele, an upset winner. Nice little overhand right from Jordan Price. That one taken on the gloves. Heavy right hand to the body, though, by Albert Sangi. He's looking to press the advantage now. Yeah, it's great to see him go to the body. He is a very good body puncher, and normally he brings an opponent down. He breaks him down, regardless of how many rounds you've got. Three is enough. He needs to bridge the gap a little bit better, get in good position, and work off that body. Well, there's not a lot between these two fighters, nor was there in the first fight. Ty just did a little bit more work. There's another overhand right, catching. Amatangi swinging. I just like to see Ty throw the, the left hook off the jab sometimes. And then launch that right hand. Lennox Lewis style. Of course, variety is key. You get a read on someone, able to counter back. There's a lot of nullifying each other in the clinch at the moment. There's that uppercut from Omotangi, doubled up on the jab, caught Ty ducking into it. This is his first really heavy shot, isn't it? There's another one, and a left hook following the uppercut. Clean pair of whiskers shown by Ty, but the tide could be turning. A minute to go in this the third and final round. Jordan Ty in the black shorts with his back to us. Iron Mossy Omotangi in the red shorts. The younger man is the old bull and the young bull. And uh, this is a rematch. Both boys needing to find something. Good work to the body, although that one's a little south of the border. Once again, you're not going to catch Ty with the one shots. You've got to put in a couple of phases, two, three phases together. That's when Almatangi was able to get effective punches on Jordan Ty. 21 seconds to go. I think Almatangi might be edging ahead, but there's so little in these rounds. Is that uppercut again? Ty. Just looking a little bit worse for wear, and Omotangi finishing fresher. Oh. I will be very interested to see how this goes. For the most part, they nullified each other, Monty. I suspect Omotangi will take it by virtue of a couple of punches landed, but uh, not a lot in it. Very evenly matched. Well, the point being, you can't draw around here in this four-man boxing competition or the contest. Would have been nice to see another extra round, but still very hard. But I think in the previous fights, we've seen that the stronger the two punches get the result or get the nod, and I think that may be the case here, but nothing in it might. Tangi looking confident. Jordan Tsai, this so. He landed a couple of his Sunday overhand rights in the second round. So just went away from his lead hand a little in the third round. And uh, Almatangi was able to land a couple of good right uppercuts, which may have stolen the round. While we await the judge's decision, don't forget we've got the 62 kilo kickboxing final coming up. Next this year, Pisos versus the Plymouth Ian Charlton. Well, they're taking some time, the judges, to tally the scores. Usually that means there's. Uh, a pretty close fight. 
Yeah, I'm glad I'm commentating tonight and, and enjoying it first hand. But, geez, I believe we've got a decision now. But it would have been one that was very hard to make. And here we go, Lieutenant Dan Hennessy with the formalities. Fight us in the center ring, please. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of super middleweight professional boxing action, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. We have a unanimous decision winner for the new super middleweight force boxing champion, fighting out of the red corner, Iron Lucy Omatagi! Well, yeah. there was not a lot in it. A couple of punches, nip and tuck, but Mossy Omatangi will take home the Force four-man title and a nice little $3,000 check for his work.